Hello and welcome to another video. In this video we're going to go through the blank cassettes that I picked up in my latest cassette haul. I've sorted them out into brands and types and there's some very pretty cassettes in here and it's actually quite an interesting collection that this couple had uh, and it goes through sort of all the time periods that they were using and buying cassettes. So these ones at the back are individual ones where there's only one of a type. So let's start with one of those, quite unusual ones. I've never seen anything like this. Audio Gold. Now the cases for all of these were quite dusty, but the tapes inside are really good condition. And this I think is one of the oldest ones. So I've never heard of Audio Gold International. Uh, did a search online, didn't find out much about it. So it's one of those cassettes I'll probably never use because I don't know what the quality is, but quite an interesting tape. So let's put this one over here and start over on this side with the classic TDK D. This one's a D60. These are the 1992 versions. They've all been recorded on. Uh, so I'm going to go through them at a later date and pick out the ones I want to listen to. And I'll probably use the rest for other recordings. So as I say, these were quite dusty. Um, they've been left on the shelf and some of them are in sunlight so some of the cases are a little bit yellowed but for the most part the cassettes inside are in excellent condition so as I say this is the 1982 TDKD90 in this case and they're fantastic because they look fantastic and apparently they would still record quite well. Let's have a look on that one. Never, no idea who Mac and Mabel is. But they might record quite well, even though they're 40 years old. So for those who are into this sort of stuff, there's the, cassette, there's the tape itself. It was quite thick in those days. Later ones are, uh, are sort of opaque. This uh, not opaque, they're semi-transparent. Uh, I guess they got thinner over time. So that is the TDK D90. There's quite a few of those. So they are the 1982 versions. And I think these ones are the 1988 version. Let's compare the two. So there are lots of iterations of this one with um, different hubs and different shells. But they all were transparent and all quite similar. Unfortunately, most of these haven't been rewound. And as we saw in my last haul video, the cassette, if it's not been rewound, the tape that's in there seems to have aged. I don't think these were left in a hot atmosphere. These were in the living room when I picked them up. So I th and on a shelf. So I think these have been on the shelf, uh, this one for probably about 35 years. And I think the tape just degrades, you know, it gets older not degrades, it gets older and that's what that concave part is. But if we wind it on, the next part is completely flat. Let's see if we can get some focus on that. So it looks pretty good. So I'm hoping these will be good, um, good for recordings. I think these ones might give a bit of hiss. I think I've, I've heard that these ones, when you record on them, might be quite hissy, but they are old cassettes now. So I think that one's a 1986, yeah, that one's a 1986 one, I think, or maybe 1988. So before we move on, let's get these, let's have a look at the J card on these. Again, the J cards, although some of them have been written on, they really are in good condition. And I'm, I like seeing the J cards as they were packed, you know, as they were unwrapped, should I say. But let's have a look at those. You can pause the video and have a look if you want to. So that's the uh, 1982 one. And I can't remember exactly, but I think this one is the 1986 uh, one. Not the 19... Uh, it might be the 19... Yeah, I think this is 1986 or something like that, 85, 86. And let's have a look at the J card on that. We've still got the stickers unused. 
I like the stickers, but I don't like putting them on the cassettes. Because I think the handwriting just looks a bit tacky. So there's the J card. And what I'll do is I'm going to put some... In the description box, you'll find a list of chapters. So for each cassette and cassette type I go through, I'll uh, have a chapter number in now, and you can click on the chapter number and skip between the different types of cassettes. There's one final TDK one, which is the TDK AD. These are beautiful cassettes, again, in really good condition. I never owned one of these until I picked some up a few weeks ago. A little bit dusty. Um, but really sort of metallic. I think this was one step up from the D's, and this is like a metallic label. Very nice, I mean, little ridges there, little texture there. And this typical sort of um, checker, you know, check pattern or squares or rectangles. Really nice, really nice cassette. Still a type one, ferric. Let's have a look at the J card. Yeah, I won't be listening to any of that. Oh, it's actually, it hasn't got, if I could, if it had Davy Bowie on it, I'd listen, but I've already tested this tape and it's got Tina Turner, and I'm not a big fan, so that's one to be recorded over soon. So that's the end of the TDKs. So some nice Ds, uh, early D, the earliest D, sort of a mid D and an AD, which is one step up from the Ds. Let's now take a look at another one of the individual tapes. I don't think this one's anything special. An Agfa FE1 Ferro Color HD. It sounds like it's a video cassette, but it's not. This one's got a weird J card. So let's open up and have a look. So quite a nice cassette. You know, I, I don't expect this to be um, very high quality, but a nice shell uh, screwed with a number embossed there. Not embossed, is it? It's debossed when it's raised. So I think when it's when it's pushed in, it's embossed, and when it's raised, it's debossed. Yeah, nice, you know, nice cassette to look at. But I don't suppose I'll be recording on that one. There's the J card. Have a look at this upside down bit. Uh, that's just oh yeah, the, the English one is down at the bottom. Uh, the Ag for one, I'm not sure. I think they're German. Um, my guess is they're German. Nursery rhymes and womb sounds. I hmm. wonder whose womb that is. Excellent, so let's put that one to one side. Right, let's have a look at some cassettes that I don't know much about. But I do know I love the look of these. These are BASF Ferro Extra 1s. These are 90 minutes. It just looks really good, I think. Oh, what year were these? I did look them up. I think they might be 1985, something like that. Um, that's side two, so that's side one. Okay, now it's still a bit dusty. And there's that tape again, slightly stretched or weathered or whatever you call it. A bit of, is that called a tram line? There's a bit of a tram line there. Let's have a look at another one. Wind this on a bit. Yeah, it's quite dark. It's a dark cassette, isn't it? That's a type one. Yeah, it's a type one. It's really dark. That one's in. It's a little. It's a little bit uneven. It's a little bit pitted. Like bumps in it. But yeah, it's a pretty cassette. Now I think these. Again, I'm going to try to record on these, but I don't know how good the recordings are going to be. But uh, still very nice cassettes to look at. Look at that J card. I edited out some uh, sounds that were happening, on, happening locally then. So let's put these away. Yeah, these, I like the look of these cassettes. I'm not sure how good they are going to be to record on. Um, now, Let's just put that there for a second and move on to the same cassette but a slightly different version. Now the only difference I can see on this is this one 
has a silver 90 on the J card and that one has a white 90 but I can't really see any difference let's have another look so that's the one we just looked at this is the new one that looks exactly the same to me so I can get them both in the same shot there we go so this is oh I can't remember which one this is this one's the uh, one with the silver one I think and this one's the one with the um, sorry, this one's the one with the white 90 on it, and this one's the one with the silver. Now they look the same to me, I can't really tell a difference. So let's wind this one on, I suppose. Oh, it's got a different leader on it, I think. Oh, well, look at that. There is a difference, there's a massive difference in the cassette, in the tape should I say. One is very dark and one is very light. So let me just identify which one's which here. Now the guy was, although they weren't very well organised on the shelf, he he or she actually took good care of the cassettes, apart from not winding them on, uh, because the although they were dusty, they're really in quite good condition other than that. So that's the light colour one. So that tape is light, so that's the 90 with the white um, number on it. And this is the 90 with the silver number on it. Ah, right, okay. I'm getting very confused here. So let's put this one here. Mm. Okay, so I've done some investigating and I think the cassettes from the inside, you know, the cassettes have been put in maybe in different cases. But this is what I think has been going on. This is the one with the white uh, number 90. Make sure I don't mess these tapes up. This is the one with the silver 90 on it. I'm going to put the silver one here and the white one here. And we're going to have a look at the leaders. So let's just make sure they're both rewound. They are. So this is the silver one. Silver one's at the top. Okay, so let's look at that. Okay, so it's just the... Uh, Similar leaders, I think. Let's have a look and we'll just wind them on. They've both got number seven. Some of them have got a number nine on them. So, let's see if I can get that focus. This one here which is the one with the white number 90 on the case, assuming they've not been swapped around, that one is much darker than this one. So they probably came from different, you know, it's different tape stock, as, they, as I think they call it. And I'm not a cassette expert. I've just learned what I can learn from YouTube videos, basically, and a few, a few Google searches. Yeah, so they're quite different. So I don't know what's going on with these. Uh, and now I'm feeling the urge to investigate that further. And, uh, God, the problem is I want to know everything about everything. So if you know what's going on there, let me know. What I might do... No, I'm not going to... I might investigate that further. But let me know if you know what's going on there. Two different um, BASFs. Both appear to be the same cassette. Different tape stock and different cases but I'm not sure that the tapes are in the right cases so let me just get organized and we'll move on to the next BASF slightly different look what I just found two different uh, uh, serial numbers on the cassettes themselves so I wonder whether that if you're a cassette expert and you know or you want to look into this please leave a message in the comments because I'm now curious so the one with the darker tape is this one at the top the one with the lighter tape is this one at the bottom. It doesn't matter. I'm just interested. Thanks a lot. Okay, so moving on to the last of the BASF, BASF ones I've got today. This one is an LH uh, E1. So again, still a ferret tape. Very similar design on there. Let's compare it. But it's actually quite different. So let's get this one out again. So 
So that one is this one here, the Ferro Extra, and there's the, let's put mine this way, that makes more sense, doesn't it? This one has um, lines on there, and this one is completely flat. And the, the shells are completely different, basically. Um, but yeah, so again, a nice cassette, and I don't know what this is. I don't know whether this is an upgrade to the other one or a downgrade to the other one. But again, quite a nice cassette. So I've got a few of those. Okay, so let's move on to this one here. This is a Fuji DR90. Again, I don't think it's going to be a particularly good brand. It's not one I remember as being a good brand that I've seen on YouTube. But, um, quite nice to look at, I suppose. A bit bland. Type 1, normal position. Again, that's sort of the uh, wearing of the tape or the aging. That's a good way of putting it. The aging of the tape where it's sort of concave. And we can move it onto a flat part. It's quite dark, you know, and, and I'm not. They say the darker the tape, the uh, the better the tape. That's what they say. I don't know whether that's true. But I guess, I mean, I, I don't class myself as an expert in cassettes or anything else, to be honest. But uh, I, ha I do watch a lot of videos about them. And but I'm aware that there'll be people who know a lot more than I do about cassettes. And also some people who perhaps have never actually used one would be watching this video. So if you've used, never used a cassette, uh, leave a comment, please. I'd like to know whether new people, and I hope you're enjoying the video uh, if, you, uh, if you've never used a cassette. So Fuji DR90, excellent. Right, let's move on to these ones. The classic Sony HF. 90. Now I think these uh, HFs are the equivalent to, um, so these are Sony HFs, an equivalent to the TDKD. It was the standard sort of entry level Sony cassette of its time. Don't quote me on any of this, but quite a nice cassette. I like the, uh, I like the label which is pre-stuck on, so that's already stuck on there, and the orange on the hubs. Um, matches the uh, the guide wheel there. And apparently the, these are quite good to record on even after all these years. Don't know what age these are. I guess they are probably 1986. But not a very nice J card. I much prefer this J card, even though that's a bit faded. And this one, if we got, we haven't got the J card on that, have we? Anyway, I, I don't like having nothing on the back. I like some information. The information would have been on the wrapper. And of course, those wrappers are long gone now. So stickers. They're very nice. I've got quite a few of those. Have a look at this one. I think I, like, I think I like that one too. I like the other one because it's quite minimalist. And I think these ones might be the earlier ones, but I think I'm not sure which ones I prefer. But they're very nice as well. And tapes are not just for looking at; they're for listening to as well. So I will eventually get some recordings on this. And again, that's nice and dark. I'm sure there'll be someone, I'm not that bothered, but there'll be someone who's interested in comparing the two. So that one is a bit lighter. That's the lighter one. That's the darker one. So that's it for those Sonys. Let's look at another unusual one now, or one that I've only got one of in this collection, a Memorex. Now remember Memorex discs, maybe floppy discs, weren't very well regarded. But it's quite nice. I like the gold in that part there. Yeah, I've only got one of those, so I, I might put a recording on that, see what it sounds, see how it sounds. I've got to have a big 
session of winding to wind all these on. There's a little line in there. You see it? This one's got a more interesting, or more interesting to me, J card, although that is in foreign languages. Oh, I don't have the English for it. <laughs> That's in. Oh, here we go. Here's the English. Um, yeah, there's the English on the top left. You can pause it and have a look at that. Okay, so Les Miserables. I'm not, I'm not really into opera. So, quite nice again to look at. Okay, so let's look at probably the oldest cassette here. Look at that, it looks like it was made in the Wild West. I don't know who Universal 365 is, but this is a really old cassette, never seen anything like this. The case is better than the actual cassette. It's got Nat King Cole on it, now I can, I can bear to listen to Nat King Cole, so I might give this one a listen. Very dark. But again, I think it's just going to be a standard ferric. Let's have a look at the J card. <laughs> it's very Wild West, isn't it? I like that. That's, that's a, a lot of character in that cassette. But uh, again, probably, I would guess it's really old. There's no dates on it. Uh, prob uh, it probably doesn't record very well, but lovely to lovely to look at. And I'm not really a. I don't consider myself a collector, but I've got a lot of cassettes, and I don't think I'll be able to use them all. So maybe I'm a collector after all. Okay, so I've had a bit of a straighten up. Let's confuse a few people. I'm going to put two words in this video. And I want you to comment with both of them. It'll be at different times. So if you've got this far through the video, if you could comment, the first word is rhubarb. Put that in the comments with the second word, which will come along a little bit later on. Okay, so just to, to go now, we're going to... Have, this is, I think, the nicest looking cassette here. So we'll do that last. This one, I've only got two of these, and one of them, the box is quite smashed. But these are... Let's have a look at the one with the box that's smashed because the cassette hasn't got labels on it. This is a Rax DX90. Now, I've never owned one of these, but... Oh, God, it's dusty. One second. That's better. That's side B, so that's side A. This one's got a label on the front. So, yeah, Rax DX. And I was looking for some information on how these are to record on, and I couldn't find any. But So, if you're a cassette aficionado, please let me know. So, a quick look at the uh, tape in there. Yes, is that, I wonder whether that uh, pad needs repositioning. Is it, is it pushing on that? No, no, that's fine. The tape's a bit manky. So, uh, yeah, I think these are... Uh, I, don't, I don't know whether to say sought after, but they're, I think they're um, quite a good cassette. Um, but that one, uh, the, cas the box is quite... Broken. So let's have a look at the J card from this one. Let's just check out the leader. Might be. Oh, I think these ones have got um, a cassette cleaning leader. God, one of these has. One of these cassettes. And I watched the video last night, but I can't remember now. Um, I watched some videos on cassette comeback, and the uh, there's one of these types of cassettes. I think has. A four-in-one leader it's a cleaner and a five second lead in or something like that but anyway quite nice these racks cassettes so let's put that one out of the way for a minute and now let's move on to the final one which is I think the prettiest looking cassette out of all of them the Max UR 90 um, and again, these look immaculate. The condition of these cassettes looks immaculate, despite the fact they're probably over well over 30 years old. And I don't know whether these are um, good cassettes to record on. I know the Maxell URs are quite popular. I think it's Maxell's entry-level cassette. I think they're quite popular. But I don't know whether this particular version of the UR is a good cassette to record on. 
but I'll be listening to them anyway and probably record. So there'll be there's lots of different playlists and I'm a bit fussy with my music. So what I'm going to do is um, pick out the ones I like, keep those if I like the music that's on there and then record on the other ones. So there's the tape. Hard to tell really. It's quite dark again. So let's look at the J card. And the other word is apocalypse. Apocalypse. That's the second word to put in the comments. So, quite nice labels. Nothing on the back. And again, have we got? A, yeah, we've got a complete J card. So I'm going to turn all these around. I think once I've list, once I've had a look and chosen what ones to listen to, and that is not going to be one of them. I'm going to put all these J cards back how they were when they were first unwrapped. So stop the video if you want to look at that. Because I like these. I like to see them as they were made. Uh, oh, this is the 4-in-1, 4-function uh, leader. Non-abrasive head cleaner. Oh, so I was right. Maybe I do know about these things. Oh, one of the functions is an AB indicator mark. There's arrows indicating the direction of the tape travel and a 5-second queuing line. Oh, indicates recording starts 5 seconds off. That's very clever. Let's have a look at that. Have we got one that's rebound? Okay, so I've wound this one onto the beginning of side B. Now let's see if I can get something that's going to help focus in. There we go, that'll probably do it. So, one of the problems when you're recording a cassette, and this is for those who don't know, uh, those who know about cassettes know this, but those who didn't realise, well, on a cassette you've got a blank part of the tape called the leader that's at the beginning. This one's actually marked up as B. Uh, most of them aren't. So this part you can't record on. This is just the part that's at the beginning of the cassette. There's the line, and I think what that means is, let's see if I can focus a bit better. That line there means there's five seconds before the cassette, um, the, the recordable tape actually starts. So yeah, I guess that's it. So that's five seconds. I wonder why there's two of them. Oh, hang on one second. Do they line up? too far right so this is where the record will be now I don't know where the five seconds is but it's going to be pretty close so the record so the erase head is there and the record and playback head is there so is there any indication of that on there oh here we go so let's find something to point with a, B indicator mark, which we saw earlier on. Um, arrows indicating the direction of travel. Yeah, we saw those. A five second line, so that is uh, four. So there's the five second line. So that, so the tape that you can record on starts five seconds after this line appears. Okay, so that makes more sense. So let's rewind right to the beginning. So there it indicates the direction of travel. And there, just there, is the um, side. And as soon as that mark appears, just before this shows there that it's just before the uh, direction of travel. So let's go back a bit. Maybe I'm looking at the wrong bit. Oh, there it is. So that doesn't make any sense to me at all. So that line four. That one there corresponds to this one and indicates where the recording starts five seconds after the line appears. But that is right at the beginning. So this has got a five second leader. Let me test that. I'm going to play it for five seconds and I'll be back in a minute. Okay, so the tape's in the player at the moment and I'm going to play for five seconds. This isn't seconds, by the way. And one and two and three and four and five wow that was clever because that's got music already on it and let's see how close that cassette is to the beginning you just winding it back a little bit there is so that's five seconds so basically it's a five second leader so that to the start of the tape is five seconds. God, I'm nerdy. 
Right, that was uh, interesting to me, but possibly to nobody else. Right, so yeah, pr very pretty set. I like that. Hopefully that will give me some good recordings because I'll probably put some stuff on now. Um, very nice. Okay, so that's us done. If you've listened all the way through, you'll know the two key words to put in the comments and you'll get a heart from me. So thanks for that. So thanks for watching. Uh, your comments always are appreciated. If you haven't subscribed and I haven't bored you witless, then please subscribe because I want to get these subscriber numbers up. Thanks very much. See you in the next video. Some of them are quite faded. You'll have to pause the video to have a good read if you're interested. Lovely boy. So it's one of those cassettes I'll probably never use because I don't know what the quality is, but quite interesting nonetheless. Nonetheless, but but quite interesting nonetheless. But quite interesting nonetheless. But quite an interesting type.